Hello! Are you ready? Because we are entering into Booker Prize season for 2023. This is the literary award which seeks to select the best novel written in English and published in the UK or Ireland between October 1st, 2022 and September 30th, 2023. Those are the eligibility dates. The judges will pick 13 novels for the long list and the official long list will be announced on August 1st and I am so curious to see which books they are going to pick. I think there are so many possibilities and choices. This is a really interesting mixture of judges. They all have different areas of speciality and interest. So I think it's going to be really difficult to figure out like what might be on this list. But I'm going to make some predictions anyway because it's just fun, isn't it? And, and this group of books, which uh, I have selected and going to talk about here. It's a mixture of predictions and a kind of wish list because I have read most of these books and loved a lot of them and not just um, personally for their their stories which I think are so impactful but I think they're so well crafted books really intelligent and interesting and exciting and some of the the best fiction um, that is coming out today so I am gonna go through my list and my selection of 13 books I would love to know in the comments below if you agree with my choices or if you have different books that you think are highly likely to be on the long list um, let's start discussing all of this because yeah it's just so enjoyable um, to talk about it makes a great excuse to talk about all of uh, the favorite books that we've read recently and that we want to see celebrated and that we want to have more people reading so to start off I am going to guess Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson, uh, one of the most exciting British writers um, that we have currently. Um, his writing is so infused with emotion. Um, it's so powerful and impactful and has this poetic quality to it without being, you know, overly lyrical. Um, this is a story of a young man who's trying to find his way in the world of, of what he wants to do professionally and with his education and romance wise and with his friends making this uneasy adjustment into uh, adulthood but also exploring aspects of his family life and it does this over a series of summers and it is so so beautiful and powerful that I just loved this story. Next, I would love to see Mrs. S by K. Patrick on this long list. I hope it does very well in this competition. I loved this novel, uh, which is uh, so impactful and filled with this sensuous quality throughout, but is also so interesting psychologically once you get deep into the the story, uh, which is about an uh, Australian woman who moves to the UK uh, to work as a matron at an English boarding school for girls. And uh, there she develops uh, a very romantic attachment to uh, the headmaster's wife. And we follow the story of her journey and her relationship um, with her over a, a period of of time and the writing in this I think has uh, it's very like straightforward in a way but it's it's just so beautiful how it, it flows along and and moves the 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 story along and um, there's lots of pointed and funny uh, observations about sort of life at a boarding school and uh, amongst the lives of, of school girls but but also how it handles the um, the protagonist's relationship um, with with her own body and with her her sexuality I think it's so innovative and and strong um, but also 
<laughs> really impactful and uh, you just feel the, the emotion of it. Uh, so Kay Patrick was selected as one of uh, Grenta's uh, best young novelists uh, under 40 um, recently and I can really see why um, they, they are such um, an exciting new writer um, and this is their debut novel. Then there is a new novel by one of Britain's best known novelists today, um, Zadie Smith. Her new novel The Fraud, which is her first historical novel, this isn't going to be published until September, although maybe if it makes the, the long list um, they'll bring out bring forward the, the publication date and um, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, but I read this because I, I interviewed Zadie Smith um, recently at a pre-publication um, event. Uh, it was so interesting to talk to her, um, especially because this novel has so many layers to it, um, so much to discuss about it. Um, so it's a, a story that's set in the 19th century in England and also partly in Jamaica. Um, it's looking at this famous trial where um, a a man was um, claiming to be an heir to a fortune and this was a big public debate throughout the 1860s and 1870s and it's about a woman that attends that trial and gets really interested in that and who is the housekeeper um, for this historical novelist called William Ainsworth and uh, we follow her interactions in his households and her progression and her rising political consciousness as an abolitionist. Um, such a fascinating historical novel with so many juicy tidbits in it. Uh, there, Charles Dickens makes a number of appearances in this story and it's really interesting her portrayal of him and I, I think it is such a, a fascinating expansive novel that's almost 500 pages long and really involving and entertaining. Another novel I read recently and loved and that I think is so innovative and exciting is Biography of X by Catherine Lacey um, which is a fictional biography of uh, the, the narrator's um, wife um, who has died who is an artist that just went by the name of X and she tries to find out the truth behind her wife's past by interviewing a number of people um, that she has had known throughout her her life and what she discovers about her and what this um, uncovers about um, this revised version of American past. Um, it's so interesting and intricate and uh, but so well told and creative and fun um, how this fictional story interacts with a number of uh, famous cultural figures, um, real life cultural figures um, from our past um, is, is so wonderfully done and it's really exciting and um, the way that this explores identity on a number of levels um, I think is so fascinating, gives you so much to, to think about while also being really entertained. Another one of my favorite recent novels, In Ascension by Martin McInnes, who's also such an exciting writer that I think deserves more recognition. This is his third novel and the way this story, this epic story inspires a sense of wonder, uh, I think is so fantastic and really powerful that it just completely gripped me. Uh, the, the story is about a woman who is a scientist and exploring the, the origins and the meaning of life. So like big questions, um, but as we follow her on her journey, um, which takes her to the bottom of the ocean and the furthest reaches of outer space, um, is so fantastic, um, but also really psychologically involving, looking at her past and um, her relationship with the people uh, around her and um, her sense of isolation in a lot of ways, I think is so emotional and moving and uh, yeah, what a powerful book. Another debut novel which I think deserves even more attention is Wandering Souls by Cecile Pin, the story of a Vietnamese um, family um, that is forced to emigrate out of um, the, the country to, to seek a new home and we follow the, the story of a girl and her brothers 
um, as they make new roots in England. Uh, but also the, the way this is told is so creative because it incorporates other aspects um, to the, the story. Um, you get different points of view of, of the, the politics uh, around the time and also the, um, the, the difficulty of, of telling a tale like this and, and really honoring the, the people that are involved in it. Um, I think it is so emotional and powerful and creative um, and especially for a debut novel and one that is so short it, it makes such a big impact um, so this was long listed for the women's prize for fiction and yeah hope it gets even more attention another author that is on the grant -a list of uh, best british writers under 40 uh, is tom crew uh, for his debut novel the new life uh, this was the first book i read this year and uh, this this story of two men in Victorian England that are trying to um, change people's ideas, uh, limited ideas about uh, people's um, sexual expression and sexual identities um, to try to broaden their understanding uh, about these subjects in the shadow of the Oscar Wilde trials. Um, it gave me such a new perspective on this period of time and life in Victorian England and explores um, both their personal lives in a really interesting and dynamic way. I mean, it's such an involving story, but uh, also a very sensuous um, story, um, how uh, it has such an impactful opening and uh, the, the way the novel plays out um, is so fascinating. Um, so this won uh, another award recently, um, the Orwell Prize for Political Fiction, and I hope it gets even more award recognition. Now, I was on the fence about whether to include this novel or not, because I had very mixed feelings about it, but it is Burnham Wood by Eleanor Catton, and I, I decided to pick it for a number of reasons, because one of the judges is a Shakespeare scholar, and uh, the title is obviously like after uh, a Shakespeare play, um, although it like that that Shakespearean aspect doesn't enter into it so much. Um, I think like until the the end really when it begins to feel really like a Shakespearean tragedy. Um, but the the story is a kind of ecological thriller. It's about an environmental gr guerrilla group in New Zealand um, that is trying to farm this this area which has been seemingly abandoned but also an American uh, billionaire who comes in and um, who has his own purposes and designs on this area of land and uh, the the story um, is really psychologically interesting like getting into each of the different characters. I think she lingers a bit too long on all of that but when it all comes together um, it becomes very tense and gripping um, so it is a very involving story and and really interesting them um, in a certain way but I'm not too entirely sure about its prospects even though the author has won the Booker Prize before. And how could I not include this novel Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kinsolver the winner of this year's Women's Prize for Fiction that has been so widely read and loved uh, but that I think deserves even more award recognition because it's such an incredible uh, accomplishment and like looking at the, like the the structure and influences of it and the the story it seems to tick all of the boxes for the the kind of novel that would be nominated for the booker and and i think deservedly so so i i, I hope um it does get get listed um I, it's a story that i loved so much i i completely fell for demon's story with all of his complications and flaws but also his artistic flair and his perseverance to survive amidst insurmountable odds. Um, it, it's such a fantastic story, uh, an absolute modern classic in its own right. It's not just inspired by a classic novel, um, it is a modern classic itself, I think. A historical novel that completely captured my heart and broke it is In Memoriam by Alice Wynn. It's such a tender love story about two young men at an English boarding school in 1914 who enlist in the war and it follows all the, the violence 
violence and trauma of that, but also uh, it's such a, a passionate story of their desire and connection for one another during these troubled times. And it is so uniquely told. Um, so it is a, a book that is so rich in emotion, but is also really innovative in its, its style and uh, has such a great attention for historical detail. It gave me such a new view of, of the war while also telling this story that I just felt so involved with and and I would love to see this book finally get some award attention. And finally I picked a few novels which I haven't read yet um, but which I'm hoping to soon and I've heard such great things about they've received so much praise. I think they're highly likely candidates. Um, so there is Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy and um, this is a novel about uh, a woman in early motherhood and her experiences in that um, it gets so like deep in into her, her story and um, her feelings and contemplation of suicide uh, amidst the struggles of um, being uh, a parent to uh, a young child. There is The House of Doors by Tan Tuan N. This is a fictionalization of the, the life of uh, the author uh, W. Somerset Mom, and um, it follows a period of his life um, when he is moved to Penang and he gets involved um, with a couple there. Um, so it's following his journey and uh, I just feel like books that are inspired by the lives of authors um, often get listed for a prize. Um, the, this author has been listed for the, the Booker multiple times before, um, so it's highly likely and it's a story that I am really eager to read. And also look at how beautiful the inside of the cover is. I, I know it's not, it's not a, about the beauty of the, the book itself to, to be listed, but that's just an added bonus. And finally, I'm going to guess that Cuddy by Benjamin Myers is going to be on the long list. Uh, this is a novel that is partly inspired by the, the life of St. Cuthbert, uh, but follows the, the experiences and lives of a number of characters through the decades and centuries and uh, connects them all together, centering them uh, around um, this area in the, the north of England. And Benjamin Myers is such an innovative and wonderful writer um, that I think is long overdue for more recognition. Um, I've read a number of his books. Um, his, his writing is so um, powerful and beautiful. It has this poetic quality to it and this sense of connectedness to nature and the way he writes about communities and um, in disparate individuals and uh, is is so powerful and uh, so yeah I love his writing I'm hoping to read um, this this novel really soon um, it's it's another like quite long novel um, but one that I've been really looking forward to getting to so those are my predictions let me know what you think in the the comments below uh, do you agree with my picks do you have any choices yourself that you're hoping to see on the official long list on August 1st. I can't wait to see what the judges select and to start reading and discussing all of these books. I just love uh, the prize season because it gives us an excuse to really dive deep into these books and you know discuss them in a lot more detail than I think if we were just reading them casually and building up to the winner announcement. So the shortlist will be announced on September 21st and then the winner will be announced on November 26th. So that is uh, the, the time period for this year's prize. But uh, let's get talking. Let's get discussing all of this. Uh, I hope you're reading good things and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.